Hi and welcome to the Mask Path and Shape Layers Extrude Tutorial. In this lesson, we're gonna go over the specifics and intricacies of extruding shape layers and mask paths. Essentially, these two methods can achieve about the same thing. Mask paths are a lot simpler, whereas shape layers can get very complex, but give you a lot of control. So let's compare and contrast the workflows between the two. For a mask path, we create a new solid, and then we come up and say, add a path. I want the ellipse here, and I'm just gonna make this one red. So now we can come in and add extrude. I'll just add my default color scheme and we can move the shape and that's looking good. And because we are working with a solid layer here, solid layers are not by default set to continuously rasterize. That's a problem both if you scale down, that has the unintentional consequence of scaling down the stroke width. So 50% of two is now one. Also, if you scale it up to 150%, now we're getting pixelation because we're not drawing it at the correct resolution. So always make sure it's set to continuously rasterize and you can scale this up to whatever value you like and it will draw pixel perfect. I'll reset that transform. Now let's duplicate that mask and I'm gonna set the second one to subtract and change its color to green. Nothing's rendering and that's because the second path is perfectly subtracting from the first. So let's go into this one's mask path and let's offset that a little bit. Expansion here will not work because expansion does not actually change the position of the vertices and the, and the plugin is reading the position of the vertices. Now, of course, we can come in here and animate this. So for example, if I want this to scale up from 0%, we can see that happen there. And we also have different modes as well. So for example, if I don't want to render the subtraction, I want to render only the intersection of these two. I can do that. I can invert that intersection. Or for example, with the first one, I could set that one to subtract and then set this one to add. And the order of these matters. That's about as complex as it gets in terms of mask paths on solid layers. Let's compare and contrast that with the workflow for a shape layer. We can create any of these shape layers here as well as freehand shape layer with the pen tool. Same for mask paths. I'll just double click on the ellipse tool and let's add the extrude effect, but nothing renders. And that's because parametric shapes, once you're happy with the settings, you'll need to convert them to a Bezier path for them to work. So we go convert to Bezier path and then it will render. For mask paths, you don't need to do that step because they're always Bezier paths. Now we have our path here. We could duplicate that path to have two paths and I can move that path over. And now we're getting intersection. So how do we control how the intersection renders with shape layers? And there are multiple ways. The first way is with the fill. So here we have a fill rule and by default it's non-zero winding. That's, that's generally good for most cases. However, we can choose even odd. And what that will do is where the number of path intersections are even, it will subtract and where they're odd, it will fill. So this is easier to display if we have say three paths and I move this third path up the top here create like a Venn diagram. In the middle, we have a total of three intersections. So that's filled on the sides. We have just one intersection. So that's filled. And wherever there's two intersections, it's subtracted. So that's one way. I'm going to come down to the fill and change that back to non-zero winding. But another way we can control this is with merge paths. And merge paths is a way to control how multiple paths intersect with each other, including different hierarchies. So currently all these paths are sitting inside ellipse. You could have these in their own separate groups or all individual, it doesn't matter. The only thing that would matter is potentially the order of those. Coming down to merge paths, we have a mode similar to the mask mode. And again, we could set this to subtract. So where they subtract from the first path because the order matters. So if I change the order, that's gonna change. Or we could do intersect, only render where the intersection happens. This is pretty familiar. I'm gonna delete that. We also have one more layer of complexity here and I'll go back to just a single path and we have the path direction. So this ellipse is looking as we'd expect it, but if we reverse the path direction, we now get this. So as you can see with shape layers, you have complete control over absolutely everything, but things can get complicated quickly. One example of where you do need this complexity might be if you're animating variable fonts. And we did cover this briefly in the text tutorial, but here we are again, we have a variable font and I've just added a stroke so that you can see that we have a self intersecting path here. If we were to add the extrude plugin here, by default, it handles that self intersection perfectly. If we wanted to animate the weight of this text, we would need to convert it to a shape layer or a mask path. But if we create a mask path from it, we'll see that because we're limited in what we can do, essentially just changing the fill mode here, there's no way that we can handle this self intersection. However, if we came up to layer, create, shapes from text, and we disable the stroke, we'll see that's rendering correctly. If we added extrude, there we have it. 
And the reason that that's working correctly is if we come down to the contents of the E and we go down to the fill of the E, we can see that it's set to non-zero winding. If we set to even odd, then we get the same behavior from the mask paths and that's probably not what you want. One thing you might have noticed is that we actually have a fill rule per character here and that allows you even more control. You can set the fill rule per character or if you wanted, you could disable all the fills and just add one fill at the end. Something that's also really handy is that we have a transform per character. So if I just wanted to say transform the E independently of the other characters, I can do that here rather than having to go into the path itself and then manipulate the vertices. So the general rule is if you need all this extra control, use a shape layer. Otherwise, mask paths are much simpler and you'll avoid yourself a bunch of headaches. That's it for working with shape layers and mask paths. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you enjoy using the Extrude plugin.